Yo, Sway in the morning, Shay 45. Man, I, we had to get these two guys on, man, the two co-founders of Shay 45. We got the one and only Eminem on the line with us right now and Paul Rosenberg, his partner in crime. Hey, Em, uh, off, off mic, Paul and I was talking about quarantining, and I'm quarantining with my daughter. Man, how's quarantine going for you? This shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is terrible. Like I, I, you know, I've been writing and working out, fucking, you know, just doing doing what. I don't know. Like the fact that there's no no sports on right now is really oh. bothersome. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we don't. There's there's not even anything that. I mean, aside from the Jordan documentary, that's that's even mm. like gives you a little a uh, little sense of normalcy like watching you know just watching shit like that like you try to just like i try to keep the i try not to watch too much news because mm-hmm. this shit is like panic mode all the time yeah and it's stressful to watch you know it's like i want to see what's going on but at the same time it's like you know i don't know man we're living hey. in some unprecedented times right now yeah man uh what you think of that jordan doc it's incredible this shit is crazy bro it's incredible and it's 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 you know it's only two episodes in but man that shit is like i don't know it's it's like nostalgia city yeah yeah i i love hearing um like, I always wanted to know the inner workings of dude's mind, like his work ethic. You know what I mean? Because we used, we used to get on the basketball court and call out his name, like, I'm Jordan, you know. But we really didn't know his work ethic. Like, that yeah. part is kind of insane, you know, in a good way, though. Like, when you could kind of unravel how the greats became great. Yeah. And then, you know, then you find out they might not be the most likable person, but you can't always get your cake and eat it, too. You want him to be great. He might not be the most likable person, but he's striving to be great. That's that part right there. I love seeing. Yeah. I think that anybody who is, uh, you know, at the top of their game at whatever they do, whether it's athletics or, or anything, has to put the time in and have the work ethic. You, you don't get to be that without it. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's the same thing for rap. It's like it's you know it takes a certain amount of talent, but it also takes it's probably three, four times the work ethic versus the talent, or or it's probably you know, I mean in some cases it might be equal, but it's but you you don't get one without the other. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You gotta work hard, yeah. Paul. What you, you work hard at, Paul? What you, Paul Rosenberg? What you work hard at? Yeah, yeah. I I am here um, trying to perfect how to live life at home, having two kids and make sure that they are um, learning and in school um, while maintaining some sense of, you know, running business and uh, being a, a person, the human being. That's what, that's what I'm working hard at. Well, that was beautiful dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, man, I want to ask you, uh, M, you ever, you ever get a chance to meet Michael Jordan? Um, not in person. But I talked with him on the phone one time, and we had, I don't know, Paul, if you remember this, but we, we were we were talking about doing some kind of shoe, like, together. Yeah, it was one of the collaborations. One of the collaborations, and I was on the phone with him. We were talking, and, and like, everything was cool. Like, he's super cool, like, <laughs> and everything was good until we get to the end of the phone call, and I said... <laughs> Yo, man, when are you going to come to Detroit so I can dunk on you? And it was cricket. <laughs> and he was like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I, I think he just kind of was like, <laughs> like laughed. <laughs> yeah. And I remember getting off the phone going, oh, my God, I think I might have just blew it. Because it was, to me, in my head, it was a complete, it was a total joke, right? It's yeah. like. You know, it's 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 so ridiculous for me to think that I I could dunk on Jordan, right? So in my head, it's you know one of those things that you think is going to be funnier in your head than when you actually say it. 
<laughs> so I don't know what happened after that. But I, Paul, did I call you? I, I can't remember who I called right after that, but it might have been Paul. I don't, I don't know. know. I think you, you felt kind of mortified by it. And, and um, I think I was pretty sure that, that Mike knew you were joking. And, um, you know, you guys have continued to do business with, with one another in, in a few ways since then. So I'm sure it's all good. <laughs> Yo, you man, it up, was man. like, <laughs> it was one of those things, like, it was one of those things that in my head just would be so ridiculous. He has to know I'm joking. But when I got off the phone, I remember thinking, I don't think he knew I, knew I was joking. Because, you know, he's very, I mean, watching this documentary, like, He's very competitive, right? Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> I like like I don't know if he would have if he if he would have um, said when are you you know when are we gonna battle? <laughs> I don't know what I would have said, but I would have I probably would have uh, probably would have laughed the same way he did <laughs> and been like, you know, but I feel like I would have known he was joking. Yeah. Mike, Mike might have some bars though. You don't know. But yeah, that's that's what I mean. That's the yeah. other thing. Like, he might have actually heard about my game in basketball, right? Uh-huh, and no. he might be like, uh-huh. "Yeah, uh-huh. shit, this okay. actually might be possible." You, you think he heard about your game though? I'm well, pretty sure he did. Yeah, it rang bells. I mean, you've heard of it. Right. Well, yeah. You've heard about it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. We played once, and yeah, I remember. You got a nice game. To be quite honest with you, I. Not Mike Jordan, nice though, bro. I... <laughs> yeah, know. I'm like I'm like one step down. Yeah, yeah one step. <laughs> yeah, from from Jordan. Oh boy. Yeah. Hey, no, you know, man. It's, speaking it's, of, speaking I'm gonna of, tell you, of, man. Yo, this watching yeah. watching him and in, in his work ethic, like, it's just so incredible. Just to know, like, he wasn't. He was born with talent, obviously, right? Like, he had the talent, but he had to hone his craft. And watching it, and, and and watching the talent go with the work ethic, like it's it's incredible, man. It's it's yeah. like uh, I don't know. I, I that's what make the great like the great. Somebody I know. Yeah, yeah like somebody I was I gonna. Know, it sound like like you with in terms of the rap gang. It's guys like you and Jay or E Forty or Snoop. These you know guys have been around. Y'all, y'all, y'all just didn't happen to hang around. Like, it's that work ethic. And then even him not even responding to you dunking is that competitiveness. Like, that's the favorite thing I got out of the doc, too, is how competitive he is. Yeah. You don't, you don't see that in yourself? Like, you, you spent your, like, let's say the last two albums responding to people who called you out, whether it's talk show hosts, podcast hosts, or, or, or MCs. You don't have to do it. But you still calling out MCs that call you out, and I feel like that's that competitiveness in you. No matter where you reach in your career, what? Yeah. What, this, what that person say? Right. Yeah. No. 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 It's it's definitely there's definitely some some truth to that, and there's some elements of that 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 go into what I do. But man, just watching that guy like in midair, like switch the shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and and have that extra little thing where he can hang in the air that long and do something different. You know, like if he sees the defenders coming up a certain way and he goes around them or behind the basket, like it's fucking incredible, man. It's just, uh, it's a, it's he is a, a phenomenon. No pun intended. Uh, Paul Rosenberg and Eminem are on the line. Um, Em, let me ask you about this, some of the things you've been doing, bro. I think um, we've been talking about them on the air, and I, and I told all our, our listeners, the citizens, that, that I would call and, and, and to see if you could kind of elaborate on some of the things you're doing. Uh, first of all, I know there's a Marshall Mathers Foundation that's been doing a lot with, you know, providing food and providing meals to um, health care workers at the hospitals. And um, you guys have provided <clears throat> hundreds of meals even at the uh, – can you talk about that, um, providing these spaghetti lunches for people and some of the health care workers? How did that happen, man? What made you want to do that? Well, me and, me, well, and Paul, me and Paul have actually just been talking about, you know, what, what, what are some of the ways that we can do our part and, and – try to help out and mom's spaghetti was one of the things that came up so 
we had talked about doing that, um, and we talked about the uh, the DJ the DJ thing that Paul could probably elaborate on a little better than me. But basically, yeah. what we're trying I mean, to do there, is there, is Paul, you want to go ahead? Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say that there was a time, um, you know, when this all started happening, where Marshall called me and said, you know, what? Okay, what are we going to do? How, how can we? How can we do, um, you know, what we do to help to help people out? Um, and then one of the things that, that I noticed was that there was um, a lack of uh, attention focused on, you know, making the frontline healthcare workers feel good and positive and just put a smile on their face. So we reached out to um, the guys at, at Union Joints, which is a uh, restaurant group in, in Michigan that we've done some work with before, who did the mom spaghetti pop up with us back in Detroit. And um, mm-hmm. when we put out the revival album and um, we did some, some mom spaghetti pop ups on the road in 2018, uh, at various festivals, et cetera. So we reached out to them and said, Hey, could we do, um, you know, w- what we did on the road for, for some of the frontline healthcare workers. Um, and they sprung into action and said, absolutely. Um, so we went and visited some hospitals on Monday uh, and we're going to continue to do that throughout the next few weeks. Um, just, you know, anything to, to pitch in and, um, you know, make these, make these men and women feel good about themselves for a minute. Uh, so that's, that's one of the things we've done. And then the other one was, um, you know, a lot of people were talking about how DJs have been affected um, by the fact that they can't go out and earn a living. I mean, you've got guys who, you know, play clubs and, um, you know, or, or parties or, you know, strip clubs or wh- wherever they play um, uh, and earn their living, they just can't, all of a sudden can't do it. So um, we thought about, like, maybe we can create some sort of program to give them, you know, some, some small relief and, and again, um, put a smile on their face. So uh, we have this, this program that we're launching um, now uh, and it's called Love Your DJ, um, and we basically are offering Michigan. you got to be a Michigan resident because we can't okay. offer it to everybody, so we're going to start with Michigan. And the first 500 people uh, who submit a mix um, via SoundCloud are going to be eligible for $313 cash payment for 313 for the area code, and the mix just has to you know, fall within a certain set of guidelines, which, which is all going to be available um, online. And then we're going to select the best of that group of, of DJ mixes, and we're going to program a Love Your DJ Mix Weekend uh, uh-huh. starting May 2nd, where the entire weekend is going to be programmed by these mix submissions. Um, and that'll be sort of a, you know, for lack of a better description, a grand prize. Oh shit! So five hundred, the first five hundred DJs in Michigan are eligible for three hundred and thirteen dollars, and which is incredible uh, because DJs really don't have a way of getting money right now. Uh, why? Why was it important for you, M, to like help out the DJs? Well, that was one of the things that we were talking about. That you know, I, I mean, obviously our our field that we work in is music right yeah so that was one of the first things that came up when me and paul were talking like you know how a dj is going to make their money you know right. so, and they're, so, they're the backbone of what, of what we do right and so this was a way to just kind of um just like get just i mean how long like how many times would y'all be well i know you probably haven't thought this far out but this is kind of incredible uh how long will you be willing to do it? Like, is it a well, time I mean, limit? On? We'll see how this one goes. There's, there, I think they have, um, I can't remember how many days. Uh, it's all, it's all in the rules, but they have a certain amount of time to submit the mix. Um, uh-huh. And then we're going to do this first weekend and we'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, uh, hopefully we'll get all 500 um, slots filled up quick and then we can move from there and maybe, maybe open it to a broader audience. But you know, it's a little bit of a test run, so we'll see We'll see how this one flies. And okay. then the, the best ones, the incentive too, right, Paul, is the best ones that that we get yeah. uh, will we'll actually put on the air, you know. On Shade 4-5. So the contest begins today and it ends Wednesday, April 29th at noon. So DJs that are tuned in, if you're in the state of Michigan, 
uh, you got to go sign up so you could qualify to have your mix played on the station, and you could win some money, $313. Uh, and then people can go to SiriusXM.com forward slash stream free, Paul. Yep. Okay. Uh, man, that's fucking dope, man. Um, what I'm going to do is send my mix in. I'm going to mail it to somebody in Michigan and then have them mail that in to y'all. Oh, perfect. We probably won't get it, though, will we, Paul? <laughs> like, you, you, oh, well... He'll have to have his people call our people, and then you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll hook you up if it's uh you know if Thank it's you, good bro. enough. Like okay, well you know I'm been I've been I've been working on it. Uh, now nah, this is really dope, man. I, I love what you're doing, and I, I say it all the time. Anybody who's in a position to help uh, uh, out others right now and taking that initiative, which you don't have to, I commend. So even with the mom spaghetti um, initiative and passing out. You know, uh, food to healthcare workers. These people aren't paid enough as it is, and they sacrifice and they put themselves at risk every day. And then even giving back to the community, the hip hop community, because DJs can appreciate it. And then also giving them an opportunity to be on the station. I think that's dope. Um, and then, man, are you doing a playlist or something, a quarantine playlist or that that people could tune into? Yeah, which I'm still I'm still kind of working on. So, I, Paul, I sent you some stuff yesterday. But uh, I got a few more things that I want to add to it. But, uh, yeah, it's basically, you know, what um, – how would I describe it? Well, it's called music to be quarantined by, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's like what, what, what uh, you know, what I want to what, what hear, basically. Mm -hmm. So – I recommend people listen to as well. Right. Uh, yeah. Hey, M, let me ask you, bro, because, you know, I've known you a long time, man, and, and quarantine for most of the country seemed like something new, but because of your fame and the status you've had, it, it feels like, and I could be mistaken, I could be ignorant, but it's kind of seemed like you've been, there was a time in your life where you were already self-quarantined because of the fame, because of the, you know, the public fanfare. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean for for sure there's there's something there's there's something to be said about that like it's you know it's uh but it but it's not the same it's not the same when you can't do a lot of your regular routines and shit and and you know going to the studio is like my my outlet, you know, and it's mm -hmm. it's you know, I can't we 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 can't really get in right now and do much, so I've just been writing you know, but yeah, the, 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 to to a certain extent, yeah, you know, fame is definitely over the years kind of already had me quarantined, but mm -hmm. it's the fact of knowing that you can't go, really go out and you can't like, we can't move like how we, how we normally move and, you know, there's, so it's, it's not just the same, it's not just the same thing for me. Yeah every day you know what i'm saying that it always is there's something to be said about knowing that you can't go out and do certain things like because the truth is if i wanted to go out i, I can do certain things right mm -hmm. there's certain things that i'm able to do regardless of the fame or not that i still can't do and like yeah. i said it, you know we were talking about w what what to do right now and it's like the fact that that when you're home and you can't even there, there's not you can't even watch sports like you know, there's no boxing, there's no fucking, there's no baseball, there's no nothing, right? So it's just like you can watch the news or you can bury yourself in Netflix, you know, but uh, I've just been burying myself in the pad, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. and and like I said, re started reading Rakim's book. I saw the crook, the Crook's Corner interview, and if, 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 if people ain't seen that, you need to mm -hmm. go watch it. The Rock Him interview that that King Crook did on Crook's Corner is incredible, and especially especially if you know and understand Rock Him like and have studied him like I have, like it's incredible for me to watch something like that and just you know he he's he drops a lot of jewels in that man. You you know I saw and I saw what King Crook did with you too, um, and I thought it was good because I know you guys got a different kind of relationship, being family. I was uh, listening to the I Will track off the album that had King Crook, Royce, and Joel, and you on it. Um, 
and those verses that you guys all spit, you know what track I'm talking about? Yep. Okay. Um, did how does that work? Was those pre recorded verses or that was just because it feel like every time y'all all get together, y'all make great songs, but you mentioned boxing. It's like a boxing match. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, how was that bringing that song together? Well, it was, I mean, it's, it's kind of just like we, we just, we do what we do, right? Yeah. Like, we're, like us getting on a song, like, especially like in the, in the, when we were, when we were doing the Slaughterhouse albums, it was the same thing. It was like getting on us, getting on a song with, with anybody from Slaughterhouse was a problem. Right. And, and rappers like, King Crook and Joel Ortiz, man, they're a fucking problem. Yeah. Right? So if you're going to get on a song with them, you gotta, you need to fucking bring it. And that's one of the things that, that, that to me is, you know, it's, it's, it's so dope that, that, you know, Crook is doing Crook's Corner right now, too. But people who might not know about Crook need to look up some of his music because he's a fucking problem. Mm-hmm. He he's one of those dudes that I, that it's nerve wracking to get on a song with him. Royce too, yeah. same thing. Yeah, that uh, the allegory was uh, shit. Uh, that's that that one, Mike. That's Royce's Bible album yeah. for me. You know, like just listening to like I, I still listen when I'm listening to that album, man. I'm I feel like I'm I'm halfway in a lecture hall, but I also I'm in euphoria for a dude who just loves lyricists. Yeah, uh, you know I I wonder too. Like I when I, I know we ain't talked in a minute, but I, there's certain things I was curious about because I'm a big fan of Don Tolliver, and I was a big fan of um, Juice World, both of which you put on this project, and I didn't even realize you knew those dudes. You oh know yeah, what I mean? you know. Um, Speak on Juice World. You put him on the Godzilla joint. Um, man, what was that experience like with that kid? Well, it's it's crazy because the the whole way that that came about, like, um, you know, I've it, it, we're talking about the Crooked interview. Like I was explaining, you know, explaining the Crook, like because I'm sure that he does the same thing. Like, you know, us us being in the game for a certain amount of time. It helps us, I think, that as 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 artists and just as hip hop connoisseurs, to pay attention to what's out, right, mm-hmm. and pay attention to all the new shit that's coming out. Because, you know, a lot of these kids coming up, man, they, they've 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 studied the greats, and you can tell, mm-hmm. and and just watching them is 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 incredible because, you know. You, you 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 might get the pushback on certain sides of the argument about hip hop, like okay, uh, nobody's really saying lyrics anymore, and this, but but that's bullshit, because a lot of these kids coming up, and I I, I you know I I mentioned Kendrick and Cole a lot. I know they're not kids coming up anymore, yeah. but but they came before or after us, right? Mm-hmm. But they've studied all the greats, and you can tell because it goes into their pen. And uh, you know, I just, I, me personally, I just, I, Don Tolliver's dope as fuck. Uh, yeah. Juice World, man, it's like, like his his freestyle that he did, like, um, when he went on Tim Westwood and rapped for like an hour straight, was incredible, especially for coming off the top of the dome. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Because a lot of people just can't do that, and they don't know that there's a, or they might not know that there's an art to that, like to be able to to be able to do that. So, Would I you just, put it- you know, I keep my finger on the pulse of everything that's out because I don't want to get, you know, swept away with the tide. Because yeah. if you don't keep up with the times, like like we were talking about the work ethic, like it's, I swear to you, it might be harder to maintain it than it actually was to get it. So, like, getting to the place where I was in the very beginning of my career, right, I know how hard I worked to get there. But I, I, I swear I feel like it, it, I worked just as hard, and if not harder, just to be able to maintain a skill set, you know? Yeah. You you always, like, I, I find it 
having known you so long, I, I, I really I keep asking you this because I find it fascinating how you respond. Like you're still ready to battle anybody, you know, and it don't matter who it is that critique you. Do do you do you find enjoyment in that? Like, ooh, okay, this is, ooh, shit, this is my motivation right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm not here. gonna lie. I, 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 that that's the kind of shit that I kind of live for. Is is that not saying that I live for conflict, but my competitiveness, you know, is is. Uh, you know, I don't know how to say it. I'm, 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 all, I, I'm not looking for it, but I'm always ready for it. You know, when when you're a kid, when we were kids growing up on hip hop. Like me in Detroit, I didn't know the stories behind certain things, yeah. right? So this new Beastie Boys documentary is coming out. So I got a chance to watch it yesterday, and they, you know, they had sent it over. Uh, which was super cool of them to do. And just hearing old stories like that, man, it's just like, and just like how, you know, I think about when we saw Run DMC on TV, like like yeah. seeing them, like even even when they show like old clips of when they first were coming out, right, when, it, when Run DMC was first coming up, it was like, man, they're so cool, right? Like, like Run swag and just, like yeah. how they're doing it right now, how you know when I see clips from back then, I feel like this shit still looks cool today. Like, and you get the story, you get the context. But yeah, but it. knowing the story of how the shit originated to me is just—it's it, so intriguing to me. Like I love stories like that. I remember, I—I I remember one one day I. I I hit Redman because I was like, I asked him, I, I was listening to, you know, I collect tapes mm -hmm. and just trying to get the, you know, and for nostalgia purposes, but I also play the tapes, right? Because it's just something that, you know, reminds you of a kid and whatever. So I'm playing the tape and I remember uh, on the Illegal album, uh, Jamal said, uh, Jamal said, uh, what the fuck did he say? So, uh, something about, uh, got a quote from my man Red that says, tonight's the night or whatever, and it was an ad lib on there. So I was like, I just asked him, I, tech, I hit him up, I was like, yo, Red, did you say, uh, was that you on the ad lib there? Because, and he was explaining the story, and I'm like, yo, that's why I love old stories like that, because it'd be the, it'll be the shit that I always wondered as a kid, yeah. but now it's like, I know a lot of these guys, so I want to, you know, I, I try not to fan out too much, but but sometimes, like, I just love little jewels like that. Did you ever see the uh, Unsung EPMD? Yeah, bro. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, 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 like Headbanger. Yeah. Like, how that song was made and, like, what happened at the video shoot and, the, you know, the tension it was on it because him and, like, Eric and Parrish were going through some things, but it was like... But uh, just knowing those stories, because when 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 we're kids, man, we just see it on TV. We just see the actual finished product. Product. Mm -hmm. We don't see. We don't know what the story was behind any of the shit at that time, right? So when you grow up and you learn, oh, that's what was going on during that time. Oh, that shit is crazy. Like that to me is the the the, the best shit. Yeah, bro. Uh, man, next time we talk, man, I wanna I'm gonna ask you about a bunch of songs that in your repertoire that. That you produce and and you could give me some of the backstory on that. I'd love to do that. Okay. You down with that? Yeah, Paul, man. Paul, you down, Paul? Like 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 four flat tires, Slay. You know <laughs> that the way I am. The a real quick story I will tell you about that is that that I I remember being on a plane. I got on a plane, and I was thinking of this 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 flow in my head and then all of a sudden the piano started coming to me and I just kept repeating the 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 melody so I didn't forget it and I kind of wrote the song on the plane and then had to make the beat afterwards so and and I remember I I didn't know how to like I had to ask Dre 
how to do it because at that point in time, like I was still learning how to produce, right? So I needed to make the idea come to life. So I remember, and I was actually on the way out to LA um, at that time to record with Dre. So that was one of the things that I brought to him and I was telling him the idea. So we just had to keep the keyboard player play the, play the melody. And then he had a bunch of drum sounds up on his, uh, on the drum machine and I just started tapping and and uh that's kind of how that came about oh shit uh man I, I know we gotta go but Dre man um just even having that access if I'm trying to think nobody is done with Dre has done what Dre has done but who's a producer that you really like put on a pedestal maybe not like dre but if anybody could do a versus with dre who you think it could be like could could it be diddy could it be jermaine dupree could it could it be molly maul who who you think it could be to just go song to song with dre i know bro you know Mm. (laughs) i mean you know i'm gonna be a little biased anyways but no there are some amazing producers though man that could could uh definitely definitely uh be on his level you know close to that level mm-hmm. who you think i don't even know how how, how to say it no, that's you know i'm trying to be say. politically correct but yeah. i think that uh you know dre is in 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 his own class as far yeah, as there's only one dre man he's in a class yeah. by himself yeah but but you know but molly Ma, man mhm that dude has a lot of fucking hits, yeah. a lot of hits, and uh, he's done a lot of classic shit as well as Dre has, you know. Yeah, I think about that. like the symphony, mm-hmm. you know, um, all the LL records he produced. Man, that that dude has done so much. Molly Ma would be great, man. And then I think the other thing people get to know who he is that don't know that should know. How important yeah. that dude has been to hip hop, you know, from Rock Kim, Eric B, Rock Sanshon, Juice Crew, all of that, sh- all of that stuff. Uh, yo, M, congratulations on. Uh, well, I don't even know if congratulations is the right way to say it, but I commend you on what the Marshall Mathers Foundation is doing with Love Your DJ. And I want to remind all the DJs: if you're in the state of Michigan, first 500 entries will be eligible for um, to get a payment, you know, a stimulus payment almost of three hundred and thirteen dollars. And then they will select the best of the mixes or the, which mixes they feel like fit Shade 4 or 5 the best. And it will be airing on Shade 4 or 5. But you got up until um, April 29th to enter this competition. Um, not even a competition. Would you call it a competition, Paul? or just It's, this? Not, it's not really a competition or a contest, no. It, it's a program, really. It's okay. a program that we set up. And we're just going to happen to pick the 15 best entries into the program um and play them on the air i don't want it to be seen as a contest because it's not meant to be that yeah Um, it's more of a program people can enter into look we know we know and not everybody has a chance to earn money right now and we know that djs are the backbone of of you know this this music culture that we're a part of and we just want to offer them um a way to uh like you said get a little bit of stimulus out of this that's all that's it man and you could go to SiriusXM.com forward slash stream free stream free get more information and all djs enter man and that's dope uh, yeah and we'll also have it on on shady records.com and mnm.com if anybody um wants to go there and we'll, we'll put it all over so of the social channels um as well all right uh paul can i ask you a question are you done you can ask me a question. I don't know if I'm going to answer it. But you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you stepped down from Def Jam uh, because you want to pursue uh, other things uh, with Goliath. Um, I'm assuming. Yeah. What, what, what's your What's your path? What's your plan? Well, so I'm I'm starting um, a label called Goliath Records, and uh, you know I'm going to have the best partner in the world um, who's on the phone with me right now, Marshall Mathers. He's going to be my my silent partner and it's just it's an opportunity for me to explore um artists and uh putting out records that are different from the stuff that i do with marshall and shady records so stuff that might not necessarily fit that brand um 
that I'm into uh, and provide me an outlet to do that. And I'm going to do it with, um, with Interscope, who we've been in business with for a really long time. Um, so it's just a, a, a new lane for, for me to explore and um, get out some <clears throat> different types of artists that I haven't, um, haven't had the right outlet to do so through in the past. Okay. Um, so all artists, send your music to... Uh... Sway Calloway at... <laughs> ah, <dot com. laughs> all right. Hey, uh, man, it's always great talking with y'all, man. M, keep it up, bro. Keep going, man. Keep making music. And, um, hey, one day, man, you got to call in on the show so the citizens can ask you some questions. A lot of people would love to talk with you, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I just want to say, too, man, you know, I, I know this, this, this shit sucks right now. This shit is fucking terrible and i know it's the worst case scenario we ever could have imagined happening mm -hmm. you know but but we we will get through this shit you know Absolutely. it's this 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 is not going to be our forever you know man no and and to add to that sway we would like to thank you to you know for continuing sway didn't miss a beat i think there was a couple of days where he played some replays and he got right back on it and um the show hasn't hasn't missed uh, I don't think one day since, and we just appreciate you and your efforts and staying positive and doing this from home. I know it's not easy. Um, and you and your the whole Sway in the Morning team, thank you so much for Absolutely. continuing to um, you know give people a bright spot in their day and provide this entertainment that you do. I couldn't do it without Heather B, uh, Tracy G, DJ Wonder, OQ, DB, and, of course, Kelly Kincaid. But, man, thanks, Paul. You know, M. Sometimes I'm on air, and I know Paul listening because he'll 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 make a comment on something I might have said, bro. He's he's, he's like a hawk on your shoulders. So I know, <laughs> shit. So I know what the hey, fuck you go through. Somebody's got to do it, right? <laughs> shit. Okay, I appreciate it, man. But thank you. The team appreciates y'all, man. Y'all have a great day. Well, Sway, uh, I want to tell you this too, man. Like you, we we appreciate you and what you've been able to do for our station, man. It's it's incredible. You know, and and it's it's so it, it's so important right now, too, for the culture period. Like it's just you know a lot of a lot of things that that a lot we have a lot of great relationships with people because of you. You oh, know, so you, there's a, a lot of rappers that come on our station, man. We might not be able to even get them if it wasn't for you. And people come to see you because you are the truth and you are the real. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you got to go see Sway if you want to do anything in hip hop. You need to go see Sway. So that's that. What you've done for our station, man, it's just incredible. So if I never had a chance to thank you for that, I'm thanking you right now. Oh, I pre hey man, I appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Let's just keep moving. Let's keep working. Let's keep breaking artists and let's keep this culture going and empowering folks, man. And let's keep sending us some um, exclusives when you get done recording them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Yeah, All right, man. Or you can talk to Who Kid because I'm sure Who Kid already has the songs I haven't even recorded yet. <laughs> Yo, I don't know how Who Kid does it, man. I don't know shit. either. I it's love that dude. Though. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, y'all have a good day. Keep up the great work, man. And to the All DJs, right. make sure y'all go. Make sure you enter this contest. Um, SiriusXM.com forward slash stream free. And um, and thank you. And Paul, I'm gonna submit my my mix. This week, okay, I'll I'll let you know if it's if it's sufficient. Okay, Later, guys. <laughs> All right, peace. All right, y'all. Yeah. Later. All right, and be safe, Paul. Bye. Be safe. <laughs>